resistance for the watch industry is measured in a few different ways. You'll see markings on watch cases like meters or feet, and this is pretty easy to understand, right? It's how far down a watch could go underwater or how far it is designed to go down underwater. So you may have a watch that says 100 meters. You may have some other markings on there that say something like one ATM. And ATM stands for atmospheres. So one bar and one atmosphere, they're very similar. They're almost one-to-one. -one. one atmosphere equates to 10 meters underwater. So every 10 meters, you're adding one atmosphere. Now, when we test watches as the watchmaker, we're using pressure, a pressure tank, right? So we are actually using PSI and PSI is about 14 PSI for every atmosphere. So whenever we're dealing with water resistance, we're constantly going from one measure to another measure to make sure that we have enough compressed air and pressure in order to pressurize a chamber, to test a watch, to get the result we want, which is to ultimately have a number that makes sense to the user. And I think what makes most sense is either the meters or the feet, depending on what part of the world you're living in. A watch when it's underwater, even if it's water resistant to that depth, or even a depth that's greater than where you're at, you could be at the surface. If an impact happens where a crown is bumped, the O-ring will deform and there could be a burp of air exiting the case and water entering the case because the o-ring will compress on one side and then the other side will not have any pressure on it it will unseal and the same is true for a chronograph button any pusher on the side of a watch case they're not all designed to be used underwater this is why screw down pushers and screw down crowns are oftentimes included with dive watches or with watches that are intended for use in or around water. It secures the crown so that it cannot move side to side and allow that O-ring to lose pressure on either side. Some watches are even designed so that the O-rings are interacting in an ideal manner with the case and case tube, even when the crown is pulled out. So, for example, an Omega Seamaster, one of the tests is to actually take it to depth with the crown pulled out. This is only something that a watchmaker should do. I would not suggest that you go diving with the crown pulled out, but the watch is designed to survive if that happens. And so it is tested that way at the watchmaker's workshop. Now in a watchmaking workshop, there are a few different ways of testing water resistance. There are also ways of figuring out where water might be entering a case if there is a problem with the water resistance. So the first test should always be what we call a dry test. And that means we're not actually putting it underwater. We have a small chamber that we pressurize with air and there's a measuring device that actually measures the thickness of the watch. And it sits with a sensor on the back of the watch and the front of the watch. It will measure the thickness of the watch and then we will do a vacuum test, meaning we remove air from that chamber to create a vacuum to see if we can pull any air 
out of the case. If we can pull air out of the watch case easily, it will fail the vacuum test. That would mean that the case is leaking. If we can't pull air out easily, the test will go on. And as the test progresses, we will have the watch sit there in the chamber under vacuum, still being measured. And if that watch case grows during the vacuum test, meaning it becomes thicker, only by a tiny amount, right? A little bit of deformation in the watch case. That means that it's actually sealed. You're not able to suck air out of the watch, so the watch actually expands slightly. And we're talking fractions of a micron in expansion. So this is very precise measuring equipment. If we then let it sit there and it remains that same size, that means that the watch is not leaking. If it slowly goes back to its original shape, that means you have a slow leak. The next test would be a pressure test. Pressure test meaning we pressurize that chamber. We add air, depending on the watch. Could be something minor, like one atmosphere, or it could be something more extreme, like 10 atmospheres. And we'll do the same thing. When we pump the air into the chamber, we expect the case to shrink a little bit. We'll measure that shrinkage, and then it will sit there. And if it expands over the course of a, a minute or so, that means that it has a slow leak. If it does not compress at all, that means that it's not sealed at all. You have a large leak. So what we want is the vacuum test to run and the watch to expand and stay expanded. Then we run the pressure and it should shrink and it should stay in that state. Then when we finish the test, pressure releases, watch will come out, and hopefully we've determined that it is at least airtight at those pressures. If it's a dive watch, at that time, it would then move on to what's called a wet test. And a wet test, we would do a similar thing, but it's in a wet chamber with water. So we have a separate tester that has water in it, and we can pressurize that chamber let the watch sit in the water under pressure for, depending on the manufacturer's specifications, usually 30 minutes to an hour. Then when we take the watch out of that chamber, we put it on a hot plate. The hot plate will warm it up. When it gets warm, we can place a drop of cool water on the crystal and if the cool water causes condensation to form on the inside of the crystal, that means there was a slow, small leak in that case. At high pressure, water is not going to enter the case. Moisture will enter the case, but not actual liquid water. So you'll have this moisture in the case. And that's why oftentimes if you have a problem with water resistance, you're not going to have a completely wet watch inside. It's not going to be full of water. You'll notice it when you're out of the water and the watch fogs up. When that moisture that's inside is cooled down and it turns back into water, usually on the inside of the crystal. Now, if your watch is not a dive watch, that dry test would be the end of the water resistance testing. However, if the watch fails the dry test for water resistance, or if it fails the wet test, we can then take it to another piece of equipment, which is technically a wet test. There is a tube that is clear, and we actually hang the watch above the water line inside of this tube that is a pressure chamber. And we can see clearly, we can see the whole watch hanging there. We pressurize the chamber that has part air and part water. Once the chamber is pressurized, we leave the watch in the air for a number of minutes in order to allow any air 
to enter that case. We want to try and get air into the case because we know it's not watertight. We know that case is not sealing properly because we discovered that with the dry test or with the wet diver test. So after a number of minutes, we will then lower the watch case into the water, still in the pressure chamber under pressure. And as we are doing this, we then release the pressure. So if any of that high pressure air worked its way into the watch case while it was sitting above the water, when we release the pressure underwater, they will escape from the case as bubbles. So once we've found that leak and we see right where the bubbles are coming from, we can then address that particular issue and correct it. And then it would go through the whole process again to make sure that that fully corrected the issue and brought the water resistance back to the specified level. So there's also one other test that is sometimes performed. Usually this test happens at the manufacturer. Sometimes it's done in service centers as well. And this test is actually the hardest test. The watch is placed in about one inch of water, just one inch. There's almost no pressure because it's just barely covered by water. This test is actually the one test where the design of the watch and the assembly of the watch and everything must be put together perfectly because when there's no pressure, you have no compression. And if there's no compression, then even the slightest, tiniest weak point could leak. If you have two domes with an O-ring between them and you put them together while you're standing at the surface of the ocean and you let go, they will fall apart. If you take them just under the surface and you let go, they will easily fall apart. If you take those two half domes and you bring them down 10 feet, it will be very hard to pull them apart because the pressure is actually causing them to be more watertight. It is pressing the seal together. So as you take a watch, it's very similar. As you take a watch deeper and deeper, you have more compression. It's actually being held together with more force. So the case back is pushed tighter and tighter, sealing that O-ring with even more force. So at a very deep depth, it's really pretty unlikely that the case back o-ring is going to leak. However, at the surface, sitting at the surface, it very well could leak. Even if you had a piece of fuzz on that o-ring or a piece of sand, something that keeps it from sealing perfectly, at the surface, that watch may leak. As you go deeper and deeper and have more compression on that o-ring, it will seal itself. So this test is really to see if the integrity is there at the beginning before taking it to depth. So it's not always totally straightforward when you look at a watch trying to figure out if it's something that you should swim with, shower with, possibly go out in the rain with or dive with. Really, it's not until you get to an actual dive watch, a watch designed and advertised as a dive watch, that you should really be totally confident with taking it underwater. There's a lot of little nuances that go along with water resistance for watches because water getting into a watch case is a catastrophic failure. It's a very expensive repair. 
it causes a watch to stop instantly. So it is a big deal. And it's a very sensitive subject for everyone because it's not permanent. When a watch is new, it's water resistant to the specified amount, but that's not permanent and it can change over time. It can change with your use and maintenance of that watch. So hopefully, after learning some of these little nuances, you'll have a better idea of what kind of watch is best for you and also how to care for that watch, how to make sure it remains water resistant or maybe certain watches you might say, I don't wanna take that one in the water or around the water anymore. And hopefully this makes for a more enjoyable experience with watches, meaning no water getting inside of your watches.